Last Day on Earth is best known for its time-consuming gameplay loop. Whether you're a seasoned player or just starting out, you'll quickly realize that progression in LDOE revolves around farming. You'll spend countless hours gathering resources, clearing locations daily to find the rarest materials, and learning every trick possible to minimize your usage of valuable resources. Grinding the season pass every day becomes essential if you don't want to miss out on some of the best rewards the game has to offer. But one question remains. Is it possible to reduce all that effort and time spent by simply spending more money? Is LDOE a pay-to-win game, or is it possible to get everything for free with enough patience? Well, that's what we'll be discussing in today's video. We'll dive deep into the pay-to-win versus free-to-play aspects of LDOE, and I hope you'll enjoy the discussion. First off, let's break down the basics of Last Day on Earth. LDOE is a zombie survival game where players gather resources, find food and water, equip themselves with gear, and build a base to defend against zombies and raiders. The gameplay is designed around clearing increasingly difficult locations and battling challenging bosses. Over time, you'll farm essential materials to craft more advanced items and gear, which helps you survive even more difficult areas. But as you progress, Gathering those materials becomes more challenging, and the grind to obtain the necessary resources can feel never-ending. Sometimes, there are only a handful of ways to get the items crucial to your progression. So, if this game is all about farming, what are we actually farming for? In my opinion, there are five main objectives that most players aim to achieve within LDOE. These five goals are 1. Building a base with strong defenses. 2. Finalizing vehicles, like the chopper, boat, and ATV. 3. Stocking up on guns, armor, and healing items. 4. Finding and crafting weapon modification blueprints. 5. Building the settlements. Every aspect of the game revolves around these objectives, and depending on your level of progression, some goals might take priority over others. For beginners, it's often about building a solid base and finishing the chopper while more advanced players may be focused on crafting rare blueprints and finalizing the ATV. Now that we've outlined these key objectives, let's break down each one to determine if they are truly pay to win, or if free to play players can reasonably achieve them without spending money. Base building is where most players will sink a huge amount of their resources. To build a relatively strong base, the materials required are massive. Every day, you'll be farming in resource zones just to upgrade your base from wooden walls to stone walls. And that's just the beginning. Let's say you want to build a 3x3 stone room, which is the standard for storing valuable loot. For that, you'll need 270 stone, 90 oak, and 90 iron plates. Sounds doable, right? But a 3x3 room is tiny. To build a more practical 6x6 room, you'll need 1,180 stone, 360 oak, and 360 iron plates. That's a staggering 54 stacks of stone and 18 stacks each of oak and iron. You can easily spend countless hours in resource zones just to gather enough for a single room, and even then your base isn't fully secure. If you want to protect your base from raids, you'll eventually need to upgrade to metal walls, and that's an entirely different ballgame. A 3x3 metal room is the gold standard for many players. Every LDOE player, especially free-to-play ones, will typically aim to build this before moving on to other projects. But let's talk numbers. To build a 3x3 metal room, you'll need 315 steel plates, 135 aluminum plates, and 180 iron plates. That's the equivalent of 15 stacks of steel plates, 6 stacks of aluminum plates, and nine stacks of iron plates. While these materials might not sound like much, unlike stone and wood, which can be easily farmed in large quantities, steel and aluminum are much harder to come by. To gather these rarer materials, you'll need to clear locations like Bunker Alpha or use a smelting furnace. However, smelting steel requires aluminum, which means you're always depleting one rare resource to make another. Even though it's challenging, it's still possible for free-to-play players to gather enough resources for a 3x3 metal room. But expanding your base beyond that is where things become nearly impossible without spending money. For a 6x6 metal room, you'll need 1,260 steel plates, 540 aluminum plates, and 720 iron plates. Absolutely astronomical numbers. 
Farming this amount would take an extreme commitment to the game, requiring constant bunker clears and a lot of time spent in the game's most difficult locations. Conveniently, LDOE offers a quicker solution for those who don't want to grind endlessly. Spend real money. You can buy a stone room pack for around $10 or a metal room pack for $100. Essentially, you're faced with the choice of either spending hours, days, or even weeks farming materials or pulling out your wallet for a quick solution. This is 100% a pay-to-win part of the game, as it offers a significant advantage in reducing the time and effort required to advance. Many players, even those who primarily play for free, will eventually buy a stone or metal room pack. And honestly, I don't blame them. No one wants to spend all their time farming. They want to enjoy other aspects of the game too. Vehicles are an essential part of Last Day on Earth, gameplay, providing the freedom to traverse the global map, reach previously inaccessible areas, and take back more resources. At present, there are three obtainable vehicles, the chopper, ATV, and motorboat. Each one serves a distinct purpose and requires specific parts and resources to complete, all of which can take considerable time and effort to gather. The chopper is the first and arguably the easiest vehicle to obtain. It requires general mechanic spare parts that can be found throughout the game world. However, to fully finalize the chopper, you will need four rare parts, two chopper wheels, a chopper fork, and a gas tank. These are much harder to come by and will require consistent grinding. The best strategy is to clear Bunker Alpha and Crooked Creek Farm every time they reset. By doing this regularly, you can complete the chopper in a relatively short amount of time compared to other vehicles. While the grind for the chopper is real, it's still accessible to most players without needing to spend too much time or money. The motorboat is a step up in difficulty from the chopper. To build it, you need to clear the port sewers, which can only be accessed after acquiring an electronic engine. The rarest part of the motorboat build is the propeller. You'll need six of them to craft the two boat engines required to complete the vehicle. In addition to the propellers, you'll need 30 carbon composites, 20 fiberglass, 10 pumps, and various other materials, all of which require significant farming. Although it's more difficult than the chopper, the motorboat is still accessible within a reasonable time frame if you commit to farming the necessary resources regularly. The ATV is, without a doubt, the most challenging vehicle to complete. It demands an enormous amount of farming in Bunker Bravo, one of the hardest locations in the game. Completing Bunker Bravo requires burning through your guns, armor, and healing supplies, making it a costly and time-consuming task. Even with regular resets of Bunker Bravo, the grind doesn't end there. The most elusive part of the ATV is the ATV transmission, one of the rarest items in the game. There are few reliable ways to obtain it, and acquiring one often depends more on luck or the amount of money you're willing to spend. The only guaranteed way to get an ATV transmission is during the Commune event, which takes place monthly. All in all, completing the ATV is a monumental task that requires a serious time investment or the willingness to open your wallet. Now that we've outlined the difficulty of obtaining each vehicle, let's dive into the pay to win aspect. Starting with the chopper, although it's the easiest and most accessible vehicle, many players may want to speed up the process. By spending $10 on the Survivor's Path Pack, you can obtain all the necessary parts in one go drastically cutting down the time needed to complete it. For the motorboat and ATV, you can purchase parts packs for about $3 or $5 each, but there's no guarantee you'll get the rare parts you need, such as the propeller or ATV transmission. There's also the option to buy the season pass, which sometimes offers these parts as rewards at the end of the pass. Depending on your luck, you might need to purchase multiple packs or complete several season passes to gather all the necessary parts. In conclusion, I'd rank vehicle completion somewhere in the middle when it comes to the pay-to-win versus free-to-play debate. Although it takes a lot of time and effort to gather the necessary parts, it's not as extreme as base building. Free-to-play players can absolutely obtain the chopper, motorboat, and even the ATV within a reasonable time frame, provided they are dedicated to farming and completing difficult locations. That said, the developers have undoubtedly made it easier and more tempting to spend real money to speed up the process. 
If you're a true LDOE player, you already know that one of the best ways to show off your wealth in the game is by how many guns and armor sets you have. The more guns you own, the richer you are in the LDOE world. It's a symbol of status among hardcore players, and many will go to great lengths to optimize their gameplay for the sole purpose of acquiring as many weapons as possible. Hardcore players spend most of their time maximizing efficiency, especially when it comes to gathering guns and armor. One popular strategy is clearing high-tier locations like Bunker Alpha, the farm, and the police department, using only melee weapons like crowbars or even spears. This approach is challenging because, as you progress in the game, enemies become more difficult to defeat. Eventually, you'll have to spend your hard-earned guns and armor on tougher locations like Bunker Bravo or the Port Lab. Compared to other objectives, farming for guns, armor, and medkits is one of the easier and less time-consuming tasks, if you know the right strategies. Take Bunker Alpha, for example. Clearing it every time it resets, both on normal and hard modes, can be a gold mine if you use the wall trick to conserve resources. Between the coupon crates and the floppy disk crate, Bunker Alpha is hands down the best location for quickly building your arsenal and getting rich in LDOE. Then there's the farm and police department, both of which can also yield valuable weapons. The police department, in particular, is great for gun farming, especially when you open green and blue card crates after each reset. And let's not forget the game-changing milestone, unlocking raids at level 150. Raiding can be incredibly lucrative, and if you're lucky enough to raid a well-stocked base, you might find yourself yeah, with more guns baby. than you have room to That's store. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. All in all, the key to farming these valuable items in Last Day on Earth is how much time and effort you're willing to invest. It's all about the grind. Sure, the game offers in-app purchases with packs ranging from $3 to $10, but in all honesty, they're a waste of money. Buying these packs is just a bad idea. Don't do it. Seriously, you'll regret it. In conclusion, farming for guns, armor, and healing items in LDOE isn't about pay to win. It's about dedication. It's completely free to play and accessible to anyone willing to put in the time and effort. If you grind smart, the rewards will come. You know what's better than having racks full of guns? Having racks full of modded guns. Sure, it's great to farm weapons, but if they don't have the best mods, they're almost worthless in the long run. That's why searching for and crafting weapon modification blueprints has become one of the most crucial objectives in Last Day on Earth. Modded guns can mean the difference between surviving and surviving and thriving, especially as the game's difficulty ramps up. In LDOE, there are three types of blueprints, common, rare, and extremely rare. The common ones are easy to come by, you'll find them throughout the game. Then there are the rare blueprints. While these are harder to get, they're still within reach if you're dedicated to grinding daily. However, when it comes to extremely rare blueprints, it's a whole different story. These are incredibly hard to obtain, to the point where it could take an unreasonable amount of time to gather them all. As far as I know, the only ways to get these extremely rare blueprints are by opening purple crates at the school police department, unlocking the BPD and army crates at the transport hub, or grinding through the season pass. And to make matters worse, you're likely to get duplicates more often than not, meaning you'll have to spend countless hours trying your luck without even completing the full collection of purple blueprints. Once you've gathered all these blueprints, the next step is crafting them. But here's where things get even more challenging. Crafting easy mods is straightforward. The required resources are cheap and accessible. However, the purple mods require high-end materials like carbon composite, factory parts, high-tech components, and lenses, items that are tough to farm in large quantities. On top of that, each mod often demands a full stack of these rare materials to craft just one. If you want to consistently farm those, you'll need to clear Bunker Bravo, grind at the transport hub, and even resort to recycling some of your valuable guns. So yeah, weapon mods in LDOE are not for the lazy. This challenge is only accessible to players who have plenty of time to grind. And of course, the game offers a shortcut. 
You can buy packs for a few dollars and try your luck at getting both the blueprints and the materials needed to craft them. I guarantee, at some point, the temptation to purchase these packs will hit you. Advanced players will inevitably run into the problem of constantly receiving duplicate blueprints, which only makes the grind for the best mods more tedious. When it comes to the game's balance between free-to-play and pay-to-win, I'd place weapon modifications somewhere in the middle, leaning slightly toward pay-to-win. The devs have a habit of making it increasingly difficult to get the items you need, nudging players toward spending money. It's frustrating, but that's the reality of LDOE. If you're serious about getting the best mods, you'll either need to dedicate a significant amount of time or give in and make a few purchases to stay ahead. Finally, after completing or at least partially completing the previous objectives in Last Day on Earth, your next big task is to tackle the settlements. Most players tend to leave settlements as their last priority, simply because they aren't crucial for progressing in the game. Essentially, the settlement acts as a second base, but it demands even more advanced resources to upgrade the buildings to their maximum level. Even after upgrading, the settlement doesn't offer much in terms of general gameplay value, at least for now. However, after you've done everything else, the challenge of tackling settlements will eventually come your way. And make no mistake, it is quite a challenge. To succeed in the settlement, you need to engage with a recently added game mode called Expeditions. Interestingly, Expeditions don't require you to use your usual in-game resources like weapons, armor, or medkits. Instead, you'll need to obtain and level up mercenaries. These NPCs have different abilities that will help you in expeditions. As you progress, the difficulty increases, meaning that your mercenaries need to be at higher levels to continue advancing through the expeditions. Acquiring these mercenaries is no walk in the park. To get them, you'll need to open mercenary contracts and hope for the best. As with most things in LDOE, the best mercenaries are also the hardest to come by. While you'll likely get plenty of common mercenaries, Getting the rare ones will require either a lot of luck or a hefty investment in contracts. And naturally, the better your mercenaries, the further you can progress in expeditions. Another aspect of the settlement is the brand new resources that have been introduced specifically for it. These materials are mostly obtained through the workbenches in the settlement base, as well as from locations like the port lab and transport hub. Upgrading your buildings in the settlement as well as building and leveling up your own base will require vast amounts of these materials. The catch? These resources are not easy to farm and will require a significant amount of effort and time. As we've seen with Kifir, they have a knack for making essential items difficult to acquire, pushing players towards spending real money to speed things up. And the settlement is no exception. There are, of course, packs available for purchase that contain these rare resources. However, the developers have split these resources into multiple packs, meaning that to fully upgrade your settlement, you'd need to buy several different packs. Very clever on their part. As for mercenaries, yes, you can buy contracts to help in your never-ending quest to collect and level up the best mercenaries in the game. In my opinion, I'd place settlements in the middle. They aren't really essential to farm for, especially when you compare them to other more impactful objectives in the game. It's definitely something you can take your time with and prioritize other goals first. In conclusion of the free-to-play and pay-to-win debate of LDOE, I would say that Last Day on Earth is without a doubt a game that will require you to spend some amount of money if you want to stay ahead. I would 100% call LDOE a pay-to-progress game because I think the word progress is more suitable than, than win since there is no real winning in this game. My final thoughts. From my own experience, I can say that I have never paid for anything in this game, but still I have a metal room, I'm almost done with the ATV, and I have racks full of guns with the best mods possible. But all of this didn't come easy. I have spent a lot of time farming and grinding when I started playing this game. If only I had spent some money, I would have achieved all of this in no time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, this is just my opinion, and I'm waiting to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on more quality content.
Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.